Now a login page probably isn't something that's gonna win you any design awards anyways, and that's a good thing because the default WordPress login page looks pretty dated. For a while now, I've been adding a little bit of styling here just to make this a little bit prettier, but it still has a lot to be desired. But thanks to Mark over at WS Form, I realized we can completely redesign the entire login system using whatever tools you are to use to build websites, plus his WS Form Pro plugin. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through that entire process. We're gonna build out those three pages, add the three forms, which are actually just templates that come along with WS Forms, and then add just a few little snippets of PHP that are gonna make all of this come together. Of course, I'll include any of the code or any of those special things you need down in the video description below so you can follow along. If that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. So I have gone ahead and done some setup here. It was really just the things that I was gonna need to have in place that you didn't really have to set through and watch me do all this. Anything that relates to the login, I'm definitely gonna cover in this video. And I'm gonna go ahead and go through and show you what I've got set up so far. So here inside my plugins, you can see that I have Postmark activated in here. This is just what's gonna handle sending the transactional emails. We have block visibility for something we're gonna be doing towards the end of this video. It's kind of a bonus here, so you don't absolutely have to have that, but it is a free plugin in the repo. We're using Generate Blocks, Generate Blocks Pro. I have the Generate Blocks theme installed and of course, Generate Press Premium. I've optimized all my images with Short Pixel. I have WS Forms Pro as well as the user management add-on, which is essential for actually completing all these login functionalities. Now this is just my preferred stack, but as long as you're using WS Form Pro and the user management add-on, you should be able to accomplish all the things I'm gonna show you in this video. Now, as far as pages, I've gone ahead and set up four pages in here. One is just a demo homepage that I was too lazy to do anything with. And then the other are the three pages we're gonna need to complete this task. One is the login page itself. One is for password reset, and the other is for forgetting your password. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what all these look like right now. Here is the login page. It's obviously missing a form, but I've gone ahead and done the general layout here with just some information in the left column and a big image on the right. For the forgot password page, same layout here. We just have to put in a different form and I've put in a different headline. And then same thing on the password reset. This is where people are actually gonna fill in their new password. Again, same layout, but we just need to add a form in here. Now on the back end of all these pages, I did use the disable elements feature in Generate Press to get rid of the top bar, header, primary navigation, featured image, content title, and footer. I just didn't want any of those things in the way. Now, obviously you don't have to get rid of all those things. I just kind of liked the clean look it gave here. And you could always just put a logo in like I did, or even link it back to your homepage if you'd like to. Now, the last thing I want to make clear just before we get started are the slugs for all these pages. So if I just do the quick edit here on the forgot password, you can see I have that set to forgot hyphen password. On login, this is just set as login. And on password reset, it's set as password hyphen reset. Now you don't have to use those exact slugs, but these are gonna correlate with the PHP we're gonna have to add later. So if you change the slugs of these pages, you need to make sure to update that in the PHP as well. Now, whenever we get to that part of the tutorial, I'll show you exactly where those slugs go inside the PHP. So what we need to do is create three different forms with WS Forms. So I'll go in here to WS Form and click on Forms. We're gonna need our login form, we're gonna need our password reset form, and we're gonna need our forgot password form. Now, don't get too worried because all of these are already created for you. When you have the user management add-on added into WS Form, you get a new tab here for user management, and we have a bunch of pre-made forms for us. This includes the login, forgot password, and password reset. So we have all three of the forms we need to be able to complete this task right here. We're just gonna make some subtle tweaks to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here with the login form, and we're gonna do just a couple little tweaks here. The first thing is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the settings on this login button. I'm gonna go over to advance and I'm gonna remove the width of this button. By default, WS Form is gonna stretch that button the full width of your form. I don't really like that look, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that full width class. The other thing that's not included in here is a forgot password link, which is definitely gonna be handy on our login form. So to add that, I'm just gonna go up here to our toolbox Go down here till I find text editor and I'm gonna drag a text editor block into our form here. Now we'll go ahead and click on the settings here and I'm just gonna type in forgot password and then I'm gonna link that to the slug forgot hyphen password because that's the page we set up in the slug we need in order to send them to our custom forgot password page. Now here on our mobile view, I do want all these to stack. 
But if I go over to tablet here, I wanna go ahead and bring this login button quite a bit shorter and bring this text editor over as well. This way I can stack these two items next to each other. I like the way it looks better when the forgot password is right next to the login button. Now, in order to align these properly, we are gonna to have to go to the advanced here. And for our vertical alignment, we're gonna change this to middle. As well as here in our text editor, we'll go to advance and make sure the vertical alignment is set to middle. We also have this remember me field. I wanna go ahead and hide the label for that. So I'm gonna uncheck show label and that'll just have our little checkbox with remember me next to it. In our actions menu up here, we already have three actions set up. One is for managing the user, which we need to leave alone. The next is for show message. If we go ahead and open that up, we'll see that it's gonna show a message saying you are successfully logged in. That message is gonna last for two seconds, and then it's gonna to go to the next action here, which is to redirect them to the homepage, which is where I want them to go anyways. However, that two seconds feels like a long time to me. Anytime I've used it, I think maybe it's not redirecting me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change that to one second here, which is a thousand milliseconds. That way it just shows that message for a brief second and then automatically redirects me. So we'll go ahead and save our changes there and publish this login form. And we can go back to WS form and add a new form. We'll go to user management and then we'll select this forgot password template. Again, I wanna to go to the button here, which is this get new password, go into the advanced and remove that full width class on it. And then we just need to make one other change here. If we go up into our actions and then send email, this is the action that's gonna happen after somebody puts in their email address or username and it sends them an email to reset their password. All that is already done for you, except down here, it says to reset your password, visit the following address, and then it's bringing in this dynamic data here for the lost password URL. Now this is gonna go to the default systems for WordPress for their forgot password page. We actually wanna use our own custom one here. So I'm gonna delete that out, and then I'm gonna paste in my own here, which is just hashtag user lost password URL, and then we have the slug of that password reset page, which is just password hyphen reset. We'll go ahead and save those changes and we can publish this form as well. Now, the last form we need to set up is our password reset form. So again, we'll go into user management here and we have reset password. We'll go ahead and use this template. Here for our button, again, I'm gonna remove that full width class. We also have these two password fields here. This is where you type in your new password and then confirm it. I wanna make a couple tweaks to those. One, I'm gonna get rid of the password strength meter, and then I'm gonna add the password visibility toggle. That's gonna to allow people to click a little button and see exactly what they typed into that field. So I'm gonna do that same process for each one of these fields here. You don't have to follow those exact steps. This is just kind of how I prefer this form to look. Now, the last thing I wanna change in this form is back up here in the actions under show message. After somebody resets their password, it's gonna tell them your password has been successfully reset, but I actually want to give them a link where they can go to log in once they've reset that password. So I'm just gonna type, please log in, and then we'll highlight this here, and we'll go to link, and we'll just do this to the slug login, which is our custom login page. We'll go ahead and save those changes, and then we'll publish this form as well. Back here in the list of all of our pages, we're gonna to need to open up each one of these. So I'm just gonna hold the command key as I press edit so I can open up each one of these in a new tab. Now here under recover your password, I'm just gonna add a WS form block. This is our forgot password page. So we need to go over here on the right hand side and click the forgot password form. We'll go ahead and save those changes. We'll move to our login page and we're gonna repeat that same process by just adding the WS forms form. This one is gonna be our login form and we'll hit save. And then we'll go to our password reset page. And again, we'll add a WS form pro block and do our password reset. Now let's go ahead and test and see if all these systems are working. And to do that, I'm just gonna grab this URL here. We'll copy that into our clipboard and we'll go into an incognito window and we'll go directly to our login page so we can test this as a new user who's not logged into the site. So the first thing I wanna test here is just logging into the site. So I've set up a test account. So I'll go ahead and put in those credentials and hit log in. We'll see our success message there. And then after one second, it's just redirecting us to the homepage. So that's perfect. So after logging out and coming back to that page again, let's test the forgot password link. We'll go ahead and click forgot password, which should take us here to our recover your password page. In here, I'm gonna put my username in and click get password. 
Here the success message says check your email for the confirmation link. So let me go grab that email. Here in my inbox, you can see that I got the email from the website saying that it's time to reset the password. Instead of clicking this link, which is just gonna open in my normal browser, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that URL so I can paste it here into my incognito browser. We'll go ahead and paste that URL in. And like we suspected, this took us to the set your new password page. So here we can go ahead and put in a new password. So I'm gonna do password one, two, three. We'll click our little eyeball icon here just so we can see that password. I'm gonna copy that, paste it in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and reset that password. So now that we successfully reset that password, we have this message here to please log in. We'll go ahead and click on that. Again, it's test, password one, two, three. Hit log in, and we're back logged into the front end of the website, which is perfect. So everything we've set up is now working just the way we wanted it. All we need to do now is make a few tweaks to disable the default WordPress login system. Essentially, all we're gonna be doing is redirecting those default login URLs to the custom ones we've made here. Now I am using a child theme here on this website. So here inside of appearance and theme file editor, it's safe to go over here to my theme functions file, my functions.php file and add this code snippet here. Now, if you're not using a child theme or you're more comfortable with a snippets plugin, you could of course use something like code snippets. But I'm just gonna add some extra returns here at the bottom just to give us some room to look at this. And I'm gonna paste in the PHP we need for this new login system. There's lots of comments in here, so you should be able to follow through it if even if you're not super familiar with PHP. But let me just point out a couple things here. If you do change the slugs of your pages, you're gonna to wanna to change them in this PHP as well. Here we have the forgot hyphen password slug here the login slug, and again the login slug down here. So if you change the name of those pages, you'll wanna make sure to go back here and change them in this PHP as well. Now, before I save that, let me show you what happens if we don't add this PHP. If I go ahead and copy this URL again, we'll go back into a private window. If somebody goes in here to wp-admin, that's still gonna take them to the default WordPress login page. That redirects them to wp-login.php, which isn't what we want. We wanna send them to our custom login page. But if we go back in here and go ahead and save that PHP, we'll load up our site again and we'll type in forward slash wp-admin. And you can see that this is gonna redirect us to our custom login page, which is exactly what we wanted. With that PHP in place, nobody's gonna be able to access the old login page. They're gonna to have to use our new login system. There's just one more thing I wanna change before we can finish that up. And that's here when you see the login form on the login page. Right now, I'm already logged into the website, so I really shouldn't be seeing this login form because I'm already logged in. So I'm gonna to go to the back end of this page. We'll open up our list view and we'll expand everything that's built out inside of this page. So here you can see we have a wrapper going around this welcome back headline as well as the form, but I wanna replace that for anybody who's already logged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this entire wrapper here. I'm gonna rename this one. This is gonna be form wrapper and this is gonna be for logged out visitors. And then this one here, we can go ahead and rename. We'll say message wrapper and this is gonna be for logged in users. Now I'm just renaming these here just so it's clear for the demo. Obviously you can name these whatever you'd like. Inside of this message wrapper for the logged in visitors, obviously I wanna get rid of that form. And here where it says welcome back, now that they're logged in, we could actually change this headline to greet our visitor by name. So instead of saying welcome back, we could just say hi, comma. We'll open up our dynamic data settings here. We'll scroll down to the user meta. And in this meta key, what we're gonna want is the user's name. Now, their first name isn't an option in this dropdown, but if we go in here and select nice name, but change that to first name instead, so user underscore first name, and hit add, and then insert that dynamic tag, we can see here it's actually gonna be showing the user's first name. So when I'm logged in, it's gonna say, hi, Kyle. Underneath that, I can add a simple message like, you're already logged in, do you wanna log out or go to the home page? Obviously we can go in here and link this home page. So we'll just do a forward slash. And for the log out link, we can go ahead and highlight log out and paste in this slug here, just forward slash WP hyphen login dot PHP. And then we have a question mark action equals log out. We'll go ahead and save that as a link there. And then we need to set our conditions on when to show and hide these, which we're gonna do using block visibility. 
So I'll go ahead and grab this form wrapper, which is just for our logged out visitors. And we'll go over here to our visibility controls. Here, I'm going to go ahead and select user role, and we're gonna say for logged out. We'll grab the message wrapper, which is for our logged in visitors. And again, we'll select user role. And this time we're gonna say logged in. So we'll go ahead and save those changes and let's test and see if it's working on the front end. Now I am logged in. So if we view this now, we should see the message that says, hi, Kyle, which we do. So this way you're able to show a different message to the people who are already logged in and they don't have to see that login form. And then you can give them the option to log out or go back to the homepage. Now, of course, it did take us about 15 minutes to set all this up, and that doesn't include the time it took me to build out these three other pages. But the good news is this is something you can build out in your starter site and have ready to go for every project going forward. So if you come up with a more generic design that you like for your login system, put that in your starter site. And whenever you start each new project, all this stuff is already baked in and ready to go. From here on out, you'll have a much better looking login system going forward for all of your projects. Hopefully you learned something in today's video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.